Hello everyone, this is C and welcome to our Crossing Chronicles YouTube channel. Are you thinking about buying Animal Crossing New Horizons? Or maybe perhaps restarting your island? When I started my island for the first time, I didn't really know the consequences of my initial choices until I'm far into the game already. This video shows you the different options and choices at the start of playing Animal Crossing that impacts your game experience. I will also show you a method I used that helped me decide what choices to prioritize when I restarted. If these topics interest you, give this video a like and let us know. Alrighty, here we go! So first off, your resident representative. This is the person who starts the Animal Crossing game the first time, and this person also decides all the attributes of your island. If you will be sharing a Switch console and this game with someone or with your family, make sure your resident rep will not go MIA on you. A lot of the progression of the game relies on the resident rep unlocking and reaching the in-game milestones. Your hemisphere. Your hemisphere of choice determines the seasons of your island. Your, most people choose the same hemisphere they're living in in real life, but if you want to go opposite that, it could be fun as well. Your name. You cannot change your name on this game. You will have a passport though, and in there you can type in your caption or pick specific in-game titles for your character. Your island name. So after you arrive on the island, Tom Nook will ask for island name suggestions. And after that's done and saved, you cannot change your island name anymore. Your island layout. There are multiple island features to consider when making your map choice at the start of the game. For others who are focused on designing their island, these attributes matter a lot. So here are some of the island attributes on the game. Your dock. Do you want it longer or shorter? If you're planning to design your dock, you might want a longer one. Your peninsula placement. Do you want it to be at the back of the island, the middle, left, right, a bit closer to the front? Um, your water openings. Do you want it off to the side of the island, all in the front of the island, one front, one side? Your airport placement. So your airport could be off to the right side or the left side of the island and the center of the island. But most importantly, your airport placement is kind of relative to the placement of your plaza or your resident services. How close to the airport would you like your plaza to be? Do you want it directly in front of it, maybe off to the side a little bit further? It kind of helps you decide on the other options such as your airport placement too. Stone areas on the beach. Do you want a large stone area that you can actually put furniture on or do you want just little bits of stone areas for looks or maybe none at all? There's also a secret beach area at the back of your island, so you kind of just want to choose if you want it on the back left side or the back right side of your island. And then finally, the topography. So don't worry about the topography of your island too much. These are the levels of your island. There's a top level and the mid level and your ground level. You can change all of that later in the game. Another item to think about is your native fruit and flower. So fruit and flowers are randomly generated and you won't know what you have until you arrive at the island. So make sure to ignore the plaza area while you're checking what fruit and flower you have so you don't prompt the next part of the game if you still haven't decided if you're cool with what flowers and fruits you have. For fruit, you can pick one of the five, cherries, pears, peaches, apples, and oranges. For flowers, you can pick one of the eight, hyacinths, cosmos, mums, roses, pansies, windflowers, tulips, and lilies. For your airport color, it's very, for me, was very important. The color of your airport determines a lot of the items you will have available on the Nook Mile store, and almost like your island's color palette on what's going to be offered on the nooks cranny but you won't see these items until you become a homeowner later in the game so if you have specific color items you like in mind i posted the link in the description to help you decide which airport color you would rather have 
So with all of these attributes to choose from, I used the method that helped me decide while I was going through the different options at the start of the game. So first off, let's get the easy stuff out of the way, deciding my in-game name and my island name. It's a little bit easier to do, but because but those methods can depend on what vision you have for your island. I used an island name generator because I am a very indecisive person. And so I linked it on the description for you if you get stuck at that part. Just be sure that before you start the game, you're ready with your name and your island name. So you won't have to be thinking about these too much as you go through the options. Also, if you do not like any of the options given to you, you can always press the home button and close the game without saving. The last point you can do this is upon arriving on your island and before going to the plaza and talking to Tom Nook. This starts the game all over again and all your choices will be reset, so be careful before doing that. When making a decision whether to restart or not, I recommend using a ranking system. First, ask yourself, what is most important for you? Your island layout, your fruits and flowers, your airport color. Most people's decisions are based on the island layout. For me though, the most important thing was the airport color. The island's native fruits and flowers have very little impact on your gameplay unless you do not have a Nintendo online subscription. Then you might be stuck with what you have. Unless you randomly encounter foreign fruits and flowers when you go to mystery islands in the game. So foreign fruits are useful in generating lots of bells in the game, especially in the beginning when you're poor, <laughs> because they are more expensive than your native fruit. So if you have Nintendo online subscription, you can always ask for help in the community to give you all the types of fruits so you can build your money-making orchard right away. Or you can sell your native fruits to other islands that have a different native fruit from yours and earn bells that way. If you do not have Nintendo online subscription, you will be receiving a foreign fruit in the mail to start with. Make sure you do not eat that, but plant it instead. You can then grow your orchard that way and then sell foreign fruit on your own island even if you do not have Nintendo online subscription. Now onto the island features. I started out by listing down all the attributes I like and rank them by order of importance. So for me, um, I wanted a green airport because of the items it offers in the Nook Mile store. These items cannot be cataloged and bought through the Nook shopping app, so it was important for me to get the right color airport. The second most important thing for me was the stone areas on the beach. I wanted large stone areas on my beach because my other island didn't have them. Um, the third most important thing for me was my plaza. I wanted my plaza to be off to the side of the airport so I can have some space to design my island entrance. For my water openings, I also wanted all my water openings to be in the front side of the island so that I have a huge stretch of beach on the sides of my island. For my island fruit, I wanted pears because my island's name is Leaf Hope and I wanted something green. It's as simple as that. And finally for my flowers, I wanted anything but pansies or roses. I had pansies as my native flower on Neverland and I kind of got sick of them. And then I also had a huge overgrowth of roses on my other island. So I didn't want to see any roses anymore. So I was fine with any other type of flowers except for pansies or roses. Everything else outside this list didn't matter much to me. The ranking also helped me in deciding if I should force quit the game and restart the options or just settle with what I have. So for example, if I only had the first, second, and third attributes here, I would ask myself, how do I feel about settling with my water openings off to the side instead of the front that I wanted? Or maybe I don't get the pears, I get some apples instead, or maybe my Ellen flowers are roses. I asked myself, if I, am I okay to give up the island layout that I wanted and the airport color that I wanted just for those other three features? So because of this method, I only force quit the game about four times and then I finally ended up with all six of the items on my list. 
and I was very happy. And that's it. So compared to how I started with Neverland and Leaf Hope, I found myself feeling more excited with what I can design on my island with Leaf Hope. With Neverland, I felt like I had to work with what I ended up with, especially the water openings on the side of the island and not having stone areas on the beach. Those are the ones that really hurt me a lot. I always would be envious of stone areas on the beach on other islands because I didn't have them. I never knew it was important for me, but I really liked the stone areas. So if you're thinking about buying the game and starting your island life in Animal Crossing or simply thinking about restarting your island, I hope this video was helpful for you and your island plans. Please like our video and consider subscribing to our channel if you want to see Animal Crossing short films, videos about ACNH villagers, and our weekly live streams. Till next time! And it goes a little